Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how to get that little circle on your iPhone or iPad screen that shows you where you're tapping. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So whenever I do videos on the iPhone or iPad I always get questions about this circle that you see here that shows you what I'm about to tap on the iPhone or iPad screen. Now while you can add some things like this in post production so that you can indicate what you're tapping or what you're talking about. The way I do this is actually pretty simple. All I'm doing is connecting a mouse to my iPhone. And once you use a mouse of course the iPhone needs some way to show you what you're about to tap or click on the mouse. So it puts this little circle there. It's automatic and it's just part of the function of using a mouse with your iPhone or iPad. I'm taking advantage of that so I can make tutorials where you could see what I'm actually doing. Otherwise I'd have to put a camera where you could see my finger touching the screen. So if you need to demonstrate something on the iPhone or iPad whether it's in a presentation or making your own video you may want to do this as well. All you need to do is get yourself a cheap Bluetooth mouse. That's all it has to be. This is like a $10 cheap off brand mouse that I bought on Amazon. As long as it's Bluetooth it should work. Now a word of caution. I have a variety of Bluetooth mice including this original wireless Apple mouse the type that takes two AA batteries. And I have some newer ones as well. This old Apple mouse that will work with an iPhone and iPad. But a newer version that looks identical works fine with any Mac I try it on but will not work with any iPhone or iPad I've tried it on. I also have newer mice that are the rechargeable kind. And the oldest one of those I have also will not connect to any iPhone or iPad device. But a slightly newer version, this one happens to be black because it came with my Mac Pro. It should be the same but this one actually does work with any iPhone or iPad. So the Apple mice are a little hit and miss. Well it seems to work all the time just something cheap like this. This cost me 10 bucks on Amazon and it's just a cheap super lightweight mouse. But you can also use a wired mouse. The way you would do that is you have to get a USB adapter. It connects to the lightning port on your iPhone or your older iPad and then you connect the USB A side to a wired mouse. Of course if you have a newer iPad that would use USB-C. So you just have to get a mouse that uses USB-C or an adapter to go from USB-A to USB-C. But you can do a wired mouse as well. So let me show you how to set this up. I of course already have it set up because you can see the circle there. But if you go into Settings and then from there go to Accessibility then look for Touch. And here you have to have Assistive Touch turned on. I do but if you go in there's the switch. Now if you go down to the bottom here you'll see Devices. So once you first turn that on nothing really happens. But if you go to Devices this is where you can connect your mouse. So here I've got one connected but you could go into Bluetooth Devices and it will look for other Bluetooth devices as well. So you can find any other mice there. Technically trackpads as well although I've never tried a third party trackpad with it. I have tried unsuccessfully to use Apple trackpads to do this. Now sometimes when you connect it to a Bluetooth device it asks for a pin. The pin is just four digits and you have to look in the little instruction booklet that comes with your mouse for whatever it is. It's usually 0000 or 1111. For Apple mice if you're trying one of those and you can get it to appear here it's 0000. Now as soon as you connect you'll see the circle appear. And now you can actually adjust how the mouse works and looks. So here I can go to this mouse here. When you start off it doesn't actually have anything there. You have to click Customize Additional Buttons. It asks you to press that button on your mouse and then it will ask you to select what it does. Now back up a level here in Assistive Touch you're going to want to go down to Tracking Sensitivity and set that somewhere that works for you. So probably something pretty low with the mouse. So that you have to move your mouse a little bit in order for it to go from side to side. If you set it too high it's almost impossible to get the circle over something so you can click it or touch it. And there are a lot of other things that you can do that really have nothing to do with why I'm using this feature which is just to show on the screen what I'm tapping. But you can set things like hot corners and such to do even more with the mouse when it's connected.
If you go back up a level here and then back up another level so you're back up in accessibility. Scroll to Pointer Control and here you can change the size of the pointer. Make it bigger like that. You can also change the color of the pointer to suit your needs. And even the border width. So that's it. And it works the same way on the iPad. The same settings in the Settings app. And remember the primary reason this is there is the accessibility function of being able to use a mouse instead of having to touch the screen. I'm just using this as a way to highlight things on the screen and so you could see where it is I'm tapping when I do tutorials on the iPhone or iPad. And of course you could do the same whether you're recording videos like me, whether you're demonstrating things in a meeting, or perhaps demonstrating how an app works if you're a developer. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.